the other move that I actually really, really was interested in. in Can like, I guess it? Can I guess yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Derek White to San Antonio. I mean, to, from San Antonio to Boston. I loved that. That was it. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Derek White's really good. Like, Derek White is really, really good. And I can't imagine a more perfect defensive fit than him and Marcus Smart in a backcourt because Derek is so smart off the ball, but he's skinny and he's better at defending ones and twos and then being like kind of a menace that flies around off the ball. Whereas Marcus can defend like one through four with ease on the ball and can fly around and do a lot of different stuff. Um, switch like in terms of switchability, like it's, that is a terrifying defensive backward. That is such a good combination. Like teams are going to have, they, they've already had the best defense in the league since the calendar turned to 2022. They just upgraded their defense. Like this is going to be a really, really fucking hard team to score on now with Derek White. Their identity is now defense and it has been for a while, but like this is a step even further in that direction. I, look, they, I trust Derek White to play point more than I trust Dennis Schroeder. I'll say that. I mean, uh, and get everyone involved. <laughs> but like, do I think he can play point a hundred percent full time? I think there's some questions to be answered there, but I think you can do a little bit better of a job of it than Marcus Smart. You can play Marcus a little bit more off the ball. You can allow him to be a cutter. You can allow him to sit in the dunker spot, which he's pretty okay at. Like, you can do a lot of different stuff there. Um, and then Derek needs to shoot it at some point. Like that, that's a big thing, but I don't know. I kind of love it. I, I, it's a, it, Boston fans, I think are going to love Derek. I think it's going to really work. So it's funny. Cause like it, it, it took me a long while to warm up to this tree. And, 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 yeah. and it was more because like, okay, Josh Richardson for Derek white. Like, wow, that's a really good trade for, for Boston. Okay. Romeo Langford. Yeah. Whatever. Like he's not, he's not, yeah, I, I think he's a throw in. Like, I, I yeah, don't really it was, it was, yeah, it was just, it was, player. it was like, okay, whatever. I still like this for Boston. Okay, now you're sending your 2022 first round pick, one through four protected. Like, let's just be honest. It's not, you're not bad enough to be, if you're Boston, you're very unlikely to be uh, uh, using this pick this year. And, it's, right. you know, I think it's going to convey to San Antonio. I said, that's a good get for San Antonio, right? San Antonio has a ton of guards. They're trying to find his, his, uh, uh, they're trying to find draft compensation with those things. I thought, wow, that's a good one there. Go like, okay, I'm okay with it. You do have to give up something. You're getting the better player. And then I kind of got a little bit put off a little Concerned. bit by the by by the swap, right? Like the 2028 swap, which yeah, yeah, I am worried about six years in the future, folks. Yes, I'm that jerk. Um, the 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 pick swap, which you don't know where either team is going to be. So it may convey, it may not convey. I always call those half a pick. Yeah. Right. So they gave away basically 1.5 picks for for and and Josh Richardson, who's playing well for Boston, who's actually part yeah. of the reason why they have one of this, the the best defenses since January is is because Josh Richardson's been playing well and he's been shooting it pretty well. Yeah. You know. And and, and I was like, wow, that seems a little bit steep. Now the thing I like that Derek White does, and I think this is a good trade for Boston. It, it took me a while to get there, but the more important thing for me is he's a ball mover. Yeah, he's not a ball yeah, stopper. that's a really good call. And, and that's, that's and that's the thing they need the most. And Marcus Smart, since he's come back out of COVID protocols, or has been phenomenal in moving the ball and things like that. I still kind of don't trust that, but you know, it's another ball mover, and that's the important key there. And I think that's really going to help their offense. So I don't feel like they lost too much defensively, and they picked up a ball mover. So that's why I like the trade. I've kind of cringed a little bit, especially giving up the first round pick this year. Um, not that you know better than me if this is I don't think this is supposedly a stack draft, but there's always it's a, value. Yeah, if we assume that that pick is gonna be in like the 18 to 24 range, let's say, like something like that, it's not that much of a value. Like I, I'd rather have Derek White than you know Josh Richardson in that pick. And I guess Romeo Langford. Like Romeo Langford, I should say, is like you know, maybe a eighth man at some sure. point. Like he does have defensive value. He's another guy that is pretty good on that end, but like just they I, haven't been, been able to figure it out. I, well, I don't think he's good enough offensively. Like, I, I'd be surprised if he ends up sticking in San Antonio, to be honest. But 
um, at least long term. And he's coming up on the point where his rookie contract is coming out. Like, I, I think that they made the right move moving him. Um, yeah, you nailed it. Like, it's unselfishness. It's like defensive value. It's everything that you hope for from a player on a team that just desperately needs that. And like, th- this is the team that like I thought was the at like should have gone all in for Lonzo Ball last summer. Like, I, I thought that they should have just went for it went out and tried to acquire him. I thought he'd be a perfect point guard for guys like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Yeah. You got, you got Derek white. Who's a very good facsimile, if not better to be frank. I don't know if he's better long-term because Lonzo's younger and still has a little bit more room to grow, but I mean, Derek white's very similar player in terms of style and he's a great defender. And if he can get that jumper back to where it was, it's a great, this is a great pickup for them. I think, I think they're really good. I think this is, this, this was a big one. This was a big move for them, you know, and it's going to fly under yeah. the radar because of all the fireworks and things like that. And Derek White's not quite the name that people yeah. think, but like this, is this was a big one for, for Boston. Again, it took me a minute to get there folks. Just everybody relax. Like, a, you know, the Twitter mob was a little upset with me, um, but like it's, it's, I, I think it'll work out just fine for them in that sense. And I think it, he's a good player, man. He's a good player. Like I, I, I'm with you, and that's a, it's it's going to be everybody's favorite trade beyond the, uh, the 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 Harden uh, Simmons trade. Let's close the loop on Boston. Um, and by the way, I think San Antonio did well. They get a first round pick and a pick swap for Derek White, who doesn't really fit their age timeline. To be honest, right. because they've gone very young, and while Derek White, I believe, is in the first year of that extension, I. Uh, he is 27 and I think turns 28 before the end of the season. He just got to the NBA so late because he took the circuitous route in college that like, it's, you know, it's, they had him for team. They had him under team control, but it's um, not, not necessarily someone that's going to grow with that team. He's more of a finished ready product now. So um, Great pickup from San Antonio. I think they did really well. I think they did as well as they possibly could have done in a Derek White deal. But I just really like the fit for Boston as well. Uh, let's yeah. close the loop on Boston, though. Uh, they acquired Daniel Tice back from the Houston Rockets for Dennis Schroeder, Ennis Freedom, and Bruno Fernando. Ennis has already been told that he will be waived by Houston um, as soon as they complete this deal. Uh, Houston, I believe, is cutting Armani Brooks. And who is the second guy that they're cutting? They're cutting someone else. The the big one I wanted to mention was Armani Brooks because I think someone should actually claim him um, on waivers, like one of these teams that's not really competing and has a roster spot. I think that would be pretty valuable for them. He's a good shooter. He's you know on a really valuable contract that I think has one year, maybe two years left. But they keep Schroeder. For this year, I guess he's another ball handler for them on a team that doesn't really need more ball handling and selfish ball handlers. Uh, I also have no idea what Houston was doing keeping Eric Gordon. That's the one that I can't wrap my head around. Like, he's finally healthy. He's played really well. He's shooting the lights off the ball. Like, could they not get a first round pick for him? Or even two seconds, like I, that's the thing. Like I don't, I'm very curious that that one that one frustrates me on on that end. Good I mean, for I'll say this: Kelly Eco at the Athletic reported that they wanted not just like a late first; they wanted like a mid first round pick for him. Maybe it was them setting their sights too high, um, and letting their stomach get bigger than, or letting their eyeballs get bigger than their stomach. I don't know. You know, and they've done this before, right? Like they did this with Victor Oladipo. Like we're only going to trade him for a first and then they ended up caving and sending him for two seconds um, yeah. to Miami last season. But like when I kind of just look at the way like, that's just not smart, right? That's just bad, no. bad asset management as a, t- as a team there, you know, no problem. I think, you know, t- uh, for Boston Tice adding another big man, you know, Robert Williams, as good as he is, has a tendency to kind of get in and out of the lineup. Al Horford's almost as old as dust. I think you have a lot of like, you know, it's just adding depth and that stuff. And in the Eastern Conference, you need bigs. Yeah, you really do. You know, it's like yeah. <laughs> Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know, like the 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 Twin Towers over in Cleveland. Like you need some size. Okay, think- okay so here's thinking of this now. Here's a really good question for you. Mm-hmm. In a seven game playoff series, would you take Boston or Philadelphia? 
Ooh, that's a really good question. That's a really good matchup, though, isn't it? That's because a, that's probably Boston that's... has a lot of guys that they can throw at James Harden. They have a lot of bodies that they can throw at Joel Embiid, and they have I, the I, shot creators to be able to take advantage of that drop coverage situation. I'm actually going to go with Boston, and 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 part of my thinking on this equation is adding Derek White. They don't have to change. Philly's yeah. going to have to change how they're going to do things, and they have whatever 20 games 25 games left to do that in and now you're hoping also james harden's healthy you're hoping joel and beat stays healthy knock on wood you know you're you, you got a lot more variables with philly whereas the moves that boston made weren't drastic and they got better so i'm just gonna have to i'm gonna go uh gonna go boston in a crazy seven game series though in a vacuum i think philadelphia is a better team I think that's a very good matchup for Boston in the playoffs. Like, I think that's actually a really problematic matchup for Philadelphia if those two teams were to meet. Because Thibel can only guard one, can only guard right. Brown or Tatum, you know, and then who right. are you putting the other guy on, you know, and they're, and they're going to go after Maxi and they're going to go after Harden defensively. And it's going to be a, it's right. going to be an issue for the Sixers. The well, the, Sixers, in Philly, Philly will try and throw Der- Danny Green on the right. other one. And I yeah. think that what Boston will do is they'll try and run a bunch of off-ball actions to try and get a switch with one of Harden and Maxi onto Tatum or Brown, and, and, and then and we'll the, see what and, happens. And the other challenge for Philly too is because Thibel is not that good of a shooter, you you have that limitation offensively. So it's it's it would be a really I'm, that's my second hope for a playoff series. My first hope is Philadelphia, uh, Brooklyn. Like we need that now. Like come on, 